Welcome to the e-learning platform by Science Park. So today we are going to cover the second part of current electricity and magnetism. Now let's see what are we going to cover in this chapter. So we are going to see the sources of electricity and electric cell which we have seen in the last part. Then we are going to see the types of electric cell one by one. First we are going to see dry cell, lead acid cell, NICD cell, Li ion cell, solar cell. Then we are going to see about battery and in the end what is AC and DC. So friends, these are the sources of electricity. Now what actually is source of electricity? Now anything which provides the required force for the charges to flow in an electric circuit is called as source of electricity. So in this part today, we are going to discuss one major source of electricity that is electric cell. Yes. Now the main function of electric cell is to maintain a constant potential difference throughout. So there are many electric circuits in which some components or all the components require a constant potential difference to function. So in that circuit we use electric cell. The symbol for electric cell is as follows. The long the line which is the length of the line which is more is the positive terminal of the cell and the another line is negative terminal of the cell. Now we will see the types of electric cell one by one. So first we are going to see dry cell. Yes. So this is a dry cell. The most commonly used electric cell. We are all aware of it. Right. So now let's see what is inside a dry cell. So before that there are two terminals. One is positive and another is negative. So the terminal which is above right now is the positive terminal and which is below is negative terminal. Now there is a protective cover on the dry cell. Now inside that you have another cover made up of zinc. When you open that zinc cover you will find a black color chemical which is also called as an electrolyte. Inside that layer of electrolyte we have another layer of manganese dioxide and in the center we have carbon electrode which actually acts as a positive terminal. Now let's see a few properties of dry cell. Now dry cell is used where there is no need of large current you know because the reaction the chemical reaction which is going on inside a dry cell is very slow that's why we can't get large current through dry cell. So circuits like remote controls and many other few things in our home we use dry cell. It has a longer shelf life that means a cell can work for around a month or days. It is very convenient to use you know you can held in any direction you can even carry it in your pocket. So friends, as we have seen, this is the dry cell. And we have seen exactly what is in between the dry cell. But now we are going to open this dry cell to actually see what's inside. Okay. So let's open it. For that we will use hammer. If you are going to open this at your home, please consult your parents or any adult at your home. So friends, this is the protective layer which I have removed. And as you know, this here is the positive terminal and here is the negative terminal. 
Now there is one more plastic layer which we are, I am going to remove. So this is the zinc cover. Now when I open this zinc cover, you will see the electrolyte inside. Now before that, this is the carbon electrode which is coming out and which is the positive terminal of the cell. Now I will remove this carbon electrode. As you see, this is the carbon electrode. And friends, you can see this black color thing inside. It is nothing but the combination of electrolyte and manganese dioxide. So the second type of cell we are going to see is lead acid cell. So in that in the container, we take a chemical, an acid, sulfuric acid which is also an electrolyte for this cell and we have the two terminals one is lead dioxide which is the positive terminal and another is made up of lead which is negative terminal and we connect these terminals to a load the potential difference we get using a single lead acid cell is around 2 volts now let's see some properties of lead acid cell. Now it can be used in large power applications where you know large current is needed because the reaction inside the lead acid cell is very fast. It is very heavy. It is not very handy or portable to carry. That's why it is used in our cars, trucks and uninterrupted power supply that is UPS. The next type of electric cell is NICD meaning nickel cadmium cell. Right. The potential difference we get is around 1.2 volts. You know they are quite cheap nowadays. They have a very long life similar to the dry cell. The main property of these cells are that they are rechargeable. You can recharge them again and again. But it still contains few toxic materials. Now these are used in variety of instruments we used in our day to day life such as video cameras, a few power tools and in few biomedical equipment. Now this is the next kind of cell which is Li ion cell or called as lithium ion cell. The potential difference we get is around 3.2 volts. Now these are low maintenance cell. We don't require much maintenance but we need to use a protection circuit if we are using it in any instrument. It is quite expensive and rechargeable, rechargeable, hence we use these kinds of cells in our mobile phones and also in notebook computers or laptops. Now we will learn or know about solar cell. The symbol for solar cell is a bit different from the regular electric cell because it is a photoelectric cell. Now in a solar cell light energy is converted into 
electricity or electrical energy the potential difference we get is around 0.6 volt and the potential difference depends on the the amount of sunlight falling on the solar cell and as you know solar cell solar energy is renewable energy so it is quite effective to use the solar cells in our day to day life and quite a lot research is going nowadays to use solar cells in our day to day life solar cells currently are used in space applications in space vehicles satellites and in solar powered vehicles right now friends do you know the potato we eat can also be used as an electric cell yes you know potato contains starch which acts as an electrolyte that allows the electrons to flow within it now we have to take a snail made up of zinc which acts as a negative terminal and another a coin or a plate made up of copper which acts as a positive terminal but the electricity or the current we get from this cell is very low hence it can be used to power an led for a few time now we will learn about battery friends as you know this is a cell the symbol of which is shown below then what is battery yes so if we connect multiple cells together it is called as a battery now friends one thing to remember here is when we connect two cells we always connect the opposite terminals of them together for example if we have two cells if we have to connect two cells together to form a battery we connect negative terminal of one cell to the positive terminal of another cell so friends the current we get from electric cell and the one we get from our power points in our home is it the same well they are not same the one which we get from electric cell is called as direct current and the one which we get from our power points is called as alternating current now what is direct current and alternating current so here we have two plots the y axis of which represents the voltage or potential difference and the x axis represents time now in direct current the voltage or the potential difference does not change with time it is constant throughout and in alternating current the voltage changes with time so this is the difference right so let's summarize our session so first we have seen the sources of electricity that is electric cell then we have seen different types of electric cell and the properties such as dry cell lead acid cell nickel cadmium cell lithium ion cell solar cell right and then we have seen what is battery and in the end the difference between ac and dc that is alternating current and direct current so friends here are some questions so we can pause the video here note these questions down and write the answers to it thank you